very often in mathematics, a question which you will want to think about is, what would it mean for a certain statement to be false? When the statement's quite complicated, this can be a really difficult thing to think about. So take, for example, uh, your analysis course, you'll be learning about things like continuity or differentiability and saying what it means for a uh, for a function not to be continuous or not to be differentiable is actually quite complicated. But luckily we've got logical tools which help us in re-expressing or expressing in a simpler way what it means for a statement to be false. So you've seen already some examples of this um, in De Morgan's laws. If you want to know what it means for a statement like phi or, or psi or phi to be false, well you know that's logically equivalent to not psi and not phi. And you've seen another logical equivalence, also called de Morgan's laws, for what it means for an and statement to be false. We're now going to look at what it means for implies statements to be false. And specifically, we'll look at a logical equivalence for the negation of phi implies psi. So the lemma here says that if you have any two well-formed formulas, phi and psi, then the negation of phi implies psi is logically equivalent to phi and not psi. So we have two different ways to prove this. You can prove this by thinking about the definition of logical equivalence. And that says that two formulas are logically equivalent if they have the same truth value under any interpretation, under any truth assignment. So what you can do is draw up a table for the possibilities of truth assignments for phi and psi. So there are four possibilities because each of them is either true or false. And you can see that in each of those cases, the two well-formed formulas in our equivalents actually get the same value and therefore they really are logically equivalent. But you can also do this by a kind of algebraic method using the logical equivalents we've already derived. So let's do that here. Uh, we have beginning um, on the first line here, we know how to rewrite phi implies psi. So we're just going to do that. We'll leave, leave the negation outside the brackets the same and rewrite phi implies psi as not phi or psi. That's the logical equivalence from our previous lecture. So then we have one of de Morgan's laws which helps us. We have right here the negation of an OR statement. And you will remember that de Morgan's laws in logic tell you that the negation of A or B is logically equivalent to the negation of A and the negation of B. So we use that equivalence here and that transforms this into the negation of the negation of phi and the negation of psi. And then lastly, to go from the second line to the third, all I need to remember is the logical equivalence that the negation of the negation of phi is logically equivalent to phi. That was two videos ago we saw why that was true. So as we go from line two here to line three, all we do is replace the negation of the negation of phi with its logical equivalent, phi, and then we've got the logical equivalence which was claimed in the lemma. So let's move on now and look at a few more negations. Um, we actually now know how to, neg how to negate each of the connectives which we've met so far. Negating OR and negating AND, you know that that can be done using de Morgan's laws. Negating IMPLIES, which is at the bottom of the screen here. We've just seen how to find a statement which is logically equivalent to the negation of something implies something else. And you also know how to negate a negated statement. That's the double negation principle, um, the double negation logical equivalence, which we met a few times ago. So in the middle, these two things here, um, all I want to do here is point out that de Morgan's laws generalize to more than one or, or more than one and. So for sets, we generalize de Morgan's laws to more than one intersection or more than one union. And the same thing works for imply for, for or and for, for and. So the first one of these says that if you negate phi 1 or phi 2 or phi 3 up to phi n, then that's logically equivalent to the negation of phi 1 and the negation of phi 2 and so on up to the negation of phi n. And secondly, if you 
look at not phi 1 and phi 2 and phi 3 up to phi n, and that's logically equivalent to not phi 1 or not phi 2 or not phi 3 up to not phi n.